The character May had many incarnations in the Pokemon franchise, but can she beat Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire as a hardcore Nuzlocke? In this run we only use Pokemon which May had in any given version. We include May's Pokemon from Ruby and Sapphire, from Emerald, from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, from the anime and at last from the character Sapphire from the Adventures manga series. I will only be able to catch these Pokemon. Even if some Pokemon never saw the final evolution, we will just evolve if we can. This run will be in Pokemon Sapphire because of the character Sapphire. Do you think May can do it? Or is there someone who might pose a problem? The rules are in the description, but I will reiterate them if we need them. We start the journey as usual, setting the game to set mode, meeting a professor and calling ourselves the usual. After arriving in Little Root Town, we help unpacking, which means we set the clock and move on. We meet the fake rival in this run, Brendan, who will pose absolutely no problem because it's not May. Professor Birch is in danger and we need to rescue him. So we pick up his backpack and choose the only true starter for May. Watching. Of course, that playful Pugina has no chance and we beat it with some scratch. Birch is so impressed with our skill that we are allowed to keep Torchic. After some grinding, we find Brandon again, who wants to see if we are really that good. And yes, we are, getting nearly no damage in the process. He returns crying to Professor Birch, but we receive the Pokedex and some Pokeball. With that, we are able to catch the new Pokemon. We can only catch the first one we see on each route and if they are the part of the list of Maze Pokemon. On Route 101, we find a Wurmple, and since the could evolve into Beautifly, so we catch it. We find Wingle on 103, which is a very good and strong Pokemon, so we catch it as well. Route 102 is one of the few spots where we can find Lotad, and while Lotad itself isn't great, Ludicoli definitely is. On the way to the first gym, we meet our daddy Norman, or not. It's uh, complicated. Anyway, we have to teach this Wally guy how to catch Pokemon, and since we are a Pokemon master, we show it to him, of course. After he caught Rawls all on his own, we continue our way to the first gym. While fighting some wild Pokemon, our Wurmple evolves into Cascoon, and it doesn't evolve into Beautifly, which I totally knew, of course, and didn't need to check on the internet at all, so we remove it from our team. In Petalburg Woods, we find Shroomish. I think Shroomish isn't good, but Breloom is. So we keep it, of course. And we find Taylor on Route 104, which might prove useful in the future. Still in Petalburg Woods, we find a cosplayer. Very original to use pirate costumes. It's not for me, but it's okay. He threatens this very nice person, so we have to defend him. The cosplayer starts with poor Pochiana, and we start with steady shroomish. We use the stun spore and spam absorb until Pugiana is defeated. With that, the pirate is done and runs away. This very nice guy thanks us and we move on. After a while, Lotel and Wolf into Lombra, still not a very good Pokemon, but way better than before. We had the first gym and we use the level cap to the highest Pokemon the next gym leader has. This will be very easy, but also kind of grindy. Our opponent is Roxanne and first up is a gainless Geodude, while we start with our sincere Shroomish. It uses absorb, which just barely did no KO. Rock Tomb hits and lowers speed. Roxanne Dan uses a potion, but it does not matter and ups up Chaos Geodude while it nearly fully recovers Chumash. Nose Pass is next. Since we already know the battle will be very grindy, we just start with Stun Spore. After that, we use Sleep Seed and spam ups up until Nose Pass is defeated, which takes a lot of time. But in the end, we win, receive a level up, get a way better absorb, and get our first badge. After the gym, we find the nice guy from Pedalburg Wood again. It seems he has a little problem with one of the cosplayers. In front of Ross Turf Tunnel, we find a man who said that his Pokemon was taken hostage by a guy in a pirate costume. Why are they doing this? And what is their problem? Since nobody's strong enough to beat them up, we have to do it. But his Pucciana did not train enough and was beaten easily by Torchic. We are returned to Pokemon and as a thanks we are able to speak to the boss of the Devoncore, Mr. Stone. Nobody cares about the Pokemon enough, but we are tasked to deliver a letter to some Steven guy and then we had to leave. The guy who wasn't able to protect his Pokemon against some pirate cosplayer is offering to take us to Doofit Town. We accept and move a bit closer to our goal. In Granite Cave, which is located on the island of Doofit Town, we find Aaron, one of the stronger Pokemon, so we catch it. At the end of Granite Cave, we find Steven and deliver the letter. He starts laughing and shows us what's written in the letter. May you suck? I don't know what that means, but it appears to be not very nice. He explains he's just the best trainer ever and we should just go home. Steven grins like a jerk and disappears for now. We can't go home now, we will move forward and beat the jerk and show him who the real champion is. On the way to the gym, Torchic evolves into Combuscan, one of the best Pokemon to have. But it may not be needed against Brawly because our team is essentially an anti-Brawly team. Speaking of Brawly, we need his badge and he can't do anything against us anyway, so we battle. He starts with a Mangy Machop and we start with our tough Talo. One wing attack is not enough, but the damage is very good. Machop uses Karate Chop, which did a lot of damage. 
Another wing attack beats much up and we already see the last Pokemon, Makuhita. Since switching is only for noobs and I predict bulk up, in the worst case we use wing attack, which did a lot of damage but was not enough. We see arm for us and the first hit did 8 damage. We know what that means. We have to already say goodbye to Taylor, our good friend. Another 8 and only 7 we survive. Our Rambarian restores some HP but it doesn't matter anymore. Brawly uses super potion but it's useless against the powerful Taylor. Another super potion and another hit in the red. And finally Brawly gives in and we win. The battle wasn't even close. Taylor was always going to win regardless. With that we have the next batch and can move on. After arriving in Slaypost City we are surprised by a flash mob. Everyone looks the same but we have no time for that. In the search for more badges we find two guys in the flash mob and they seem angry that I didn't get the memo. But we beat them up fairly easily with Froomish and Winger. In the meantime the boss came in and talks about how great it is to be a pirate but I didn't listen. On the route to Morva City we find Minon which we gladly catch. Unfortunately it's just a bad Pikachu and that says it. A lot. And who is that? Oh, it's Brandon. He wants to battle, so we battle. He starts with a simple Shroomish and we start with our trusty Taylor. Wing attack is not enough, but Shroomish is scared and completely misses with Stun Spore. The next wing attack beats Shroomish and we can move on with full HP to Numil. Our wing attack does below half and Numil hits with Ember for some damage. The next wing attack nearly KOs and another Ember puts us in the danger zone. An easy quick attack ends the battle against Numil and we receive a juice level up. Next is Marsh Tom. Taylor did enough and we switch into Shroomish while Marshall uses Bide. Since we have some time, we first miss with Leech Seed and then hit with Stumps War, receiving no damage in the process. One Mega Drain is not enough even with 4 times super effective stab, very disappointing. But Marshall can't move. We use another Mega Drain, it doesn't KO as expected, but Marsham uses a pitiful mud shot for some damage. Just another Mega Drain and this battle ends in our victory as usual. We are rewarded with a level up and have enough time to make fun of little Brandon. In Marvel City we find the most powerful trainer again, Random Aroma Lady, but she has no chance anyway. Also in Marvel City we find Wally again. He learned how to catch Pokemon but it seems we did a very bad job at it since he still has only one. He starts with his Ragged Rolls and we start with our Adept Aaron. Wally lost to cheat and used Double Team, a move I would never use and Aaron still hits with Headbutt for a lot of damage. Confusion hits and doesn't do anything, but we hit with headbutt again. Cheating doesn't work out in the end, Wally is defeated and he is salty about it. But we don't care and move on. While we search for more free experience, Taylor evolves into Swallow, a very good upgrade. Since we are winning so hard, I wasn't really paying attention to the battles and a Magnemite did Supersonic into Metal Sound into Metal Sound into Thunder Shock for a KO on Aaron. That one stung a bit, since it was completely preventable and in my mind Aaron is a very good Pokemon. But it is what it is. You have no time to mourn since we need to beat the gym leader in Morva City. But not before Shroomish evolves into Breloom. I really like this Pokemon and that means we need to protect it until the end game. The next gym leader is Watson with a level cap of 23. He starts with Mega Magnemite and we start with Brilliant Breloom. Breloom uses a Mark Punch and easily defeats the Magnemite. And next is Voltorb. We use another Mark Punch and it does a bit over half. We see a self struck. Oh, please no. No! Critical hit? Of course. Yeah, sure. I didn't like Breloom anyway. We continue on with Combuscan since the last Pokemon is Magneton anyway. We see a Sonic Boom and it does exactly 20 damage as usual. Ember hits and does a bit over half. Shockwave hits and does dangerously much damage. But Ember hits and we win this battle. I'm very sad about Breloom but very happy about the new batch. With that batch we can use Rock Smash and move on to the Fiery Path. We encounter Numil on Fiery Path. I didn't realize that on the grass right before Fiery Path we were also able to encounter Numil as well. That means we are not able to get any Slugma in this run since Slugma is only available in Fiery Path. After a bit of walking we find a Swablu on Route 114. I understand that Swablu was never a real teammate of May. But you could see it as a teammate in the Auras trailers. We catch it anyway. In Meteorite Falls we find these pirates wannabes again. I don't want to associate with them but I keep running into these guys. For some reason there seems to be another group who is practically the same but just in red. They try to talk to me but I don't want to deal with this and move on. I forgot that we had an encounter on Route 116, Skitty. I think this Pokemon is quite cute but also very bad. It can learn nearly every TM but the stats aren't good so we catch it. But probably won't use it. After a while Winger 
that revised into Pelipper. I already did run where Pelipper was a really good asset, but I will use it again, since it's just a great Pokemon to have. We want to check out the scenery and move up to Mount Chimney. And who do we find here again? Of course, it's the Pirate Gang and their Red Comrade. We find the leader of this clown Fiesta Archie and try to make them leave, but he wants to battle instead. He starts with immediately my Diana and we start with our lean Lombra. And of course we see an Intimidate already. Lombra uses a little fake out, but it did no damage. That means we switch out into Combusken and see a bite, which didn't do a lot either. Combusken uses a double kick and it seems the fake out did a job because my Diana is defeated and Goybert is next. This is a bad matchup for us, so we switch into Minon and get hit with a small wing attack, which is fine for us. Minon uses a spark, which does over half and also paralyzes. Unfortunately, supersonic hits, which is super bad for us. We try to be lucky and get punished instead and see another wing attack. Minon can still be useful and let's not be too greedy, so we switch out into Swablu. But a wing attack does nearly half. After thinking for a bit, we use Fury attack, but only hit twice, and it doesn't do any relevant damage, but we see a miss supersonic, which is great. But that tiny bit of damage was enough to get the Goybit into super potion range and we do a little damage again. We switch into Swallow and see another wing attack for a good chunk of HP. Swallow uses wing attack and puts Goybit into yellow HP while Supersonic misses again. Another wing attack beats Goybit which is nice since I don't like cheesy techniques like Supersonic and stuff. We have the final Pokemon Sharpedo. Choosing a move isn't easy but we decide on wing attack which does over half and we see a scary face which doesn't matter that much. Since we committed last turn we can commit again and see a focus energy which is totally fine. Wing attack hits and beats Sharpedo, we receive a level up as a reward and the pirate captain is defeated. With that the pirate gang leaves and I get told that the next gym is right around the corner so we don't lose any time and wither them. The next gym leader is Flannery, master of fire or whatever. She starts with a sluggish slugma and we start with our precious Pelipper. Pelipper uses a water gun and nearly chaos slugma. Unfortunately slugma uses sunny day which severely reduces our damage for some turns. Flannery uses a hyper potion which is fine. We use a water gun which doesn't do half as expected. Another water gun puts Slugma back into the red and it misses with smog, which I like to see since we try to stall out the sunny day. This time no potion and Slugma is defeated, but of course we have another Slugma coming up and another turn of the sun. Pilipa uses Protect to see what's coming next and unfortunately we see a light screen. Little side note, should have used water gun anyway, we weren't able to KO last Slugma, so I assume it's not different here. Sun fades. We use water gun and it does over half, but Slugma uses rock slide, which did less than expected. Another water gun, but it didn't KO. We see rock slide again, which puts us in the danger zone, and the berry restores some HP. Flannery uses another hyper potion and we hit with water gun to put Slugma back into the yellow. Pilipa uses a protect to stall for one turn to remove light screen from the field. This time water gun is enough and Slugma is defeated, and we move on to Torkoal without sunny day or light screen. We use a protect to see what attack will be used and it is body slam. Pilipa hits with water gun and it does below half. We see body slam, we should survive another one. Another water gun puts Torkoal into the yellow but we see a mist overheat. I don't know if that would have KO'd us but I don't want to find out and we use another water gun to beat Torkoal and gain our fourth badge. With that we can finally challenge Norman and let's see how that turns out. Since this is usually a very grindy battle I try a very risky strategy. He starts with a sleepy slacking and we start with our proud Pelipper. Pelipper uses Protect to get to the true end turn. We use Supersonic but it misses, which means we need another turn. Another Protect to get to another true end turn. This time Supersonic hits and we can start. We switch into Combusken. Slacking can do a move but it's Encore which can't do anything. Combusken uses Bulk Up to gain more physical stats. Unfortunately Slacking can move now and does a crazy amount of damage with Facade. We use another ball cup, no reason not to, and get some HP back thanks to a berry. In the free turn we use another ball cup, that way we should survive one hit and hope it's enough. We think for a bit and of course Slacking is confused but can move again, great. Yawn is also one of the worst moves for us. We buff again with ball cup and know it's go time, if we want it or not. But even with all the buffs, double kick only barely KOs and we fell asleep. This is bad, very bad. Vigoroth is next. We try to stall with all the defense ups and Slash did a bit of damage. Facade hits and we get dangerously low but stay asleep. This is not looking good. Another Slash and we still stay asleep. It's the worst. We don't want to lose Combustion, but what can we do? We throw in Swablu and see what happens. Slash happens and does below half. We press Sing and get hit with Facade to nearly KO and then we see Vital Spirit and feel really 
really stupid. We switch on the Swallow and Slash crits for over half and Barry restores some HP. We use Endeavor and get down to 6 HP, not looking good. Or maybe it's the best outcome we could hope for and we could use that. Anyway, we switch into Pelipper and see a faint attack. We use Wing Attack but it does no damage and get hit below half. A Hyper Potion fills up Vigoroth and we hit with Water Gun for no damage again. Another Slash puts us in a danger zone but we hit with Super Sonic which might be huge. Also, a berry restores some HP. Rigoroth uses Encore and locks us into Super Sonic, which means we have to switch out. Pelipper gets swapped out for Lombra, and finally the first time Confusion did anything at all. Lombra uses a Fake Out to get some free damage in. Rigoroth hits itself again, but we miss as well. Rigoroth snaps out of Confusion and completely deletes Lombra with a Critical Slash. I wanted a Ludicolo, but what can we do? Look at our team, the battle is basically done, maybe we lose just right here. We choose Minon next, he has to handle it. Minon uses a Thunder Wave and hit, but Rigoroth hits the facade which is now boosted and we get to the danger zone. The barrier restores some HP but won't matter. We can't switch anymore so we use Spark and it puts Vigoroth only some HP away from KO. Vigoroth stays paralyzed but of course Norman has another hyper potion and keep in mind we have the ace still left. Spark hits and did a bit of damage. Another Spark and Vigoroth stays paralyzed. I can't believe how lucky we are. Another Spark puts Vigoroth back to the last points of HP but Vigoroth hits and Minum is defeated. Thanks for everything we will use this opening. We shoot Swallow and one quick attack is enough to beat Rigoroth. Now comes the last Pokemon and we have only one strategy left, which should grant us the win, but we have to pay a high price again. We see Slarking tighten in its focus and Endeavor brings him down to 6 HP, but Slarking loses its focus. I didn't know this interaction, but I like to be surprised sometimes. That means only one quick attack left and Norman is defeated. This could have been an easy loss, even though we lost one great Pokemon and Minum. With this badge, we can get Surf and a new rod, which we use to fish up Weimar, a great addition to our team. Keep in mind, since Lumber is gone, we have only Weimar left to use Dive, which is needed to get to the late game. And while we are surfing anyway, we can take a look at the abandoned ship as well. Here we find Team 13 Ice Beam, which might come in handy regarding the next gym leader. We also get to New Morvis City for some side quests. Maybe Thunderball is quite interesting for this run. And what do you know? We find a very odd colored Magnemite. But since it's not on the list, you know what it means. Bye bye. We press a button at the end, receive TM24 Thunderbolt and move on. On the way to the next gym we find Tropius, a very interesting Pokemon. We catch it and we'll use it since we don't have a grass Pokemon anymore. Also on the way we find a random ninja boy, which I totally see before and wanted to battle for sure. I can't do anything now. A wing attack for Ninkara, easy KO. Coughing survives a wing attack and we see a smoke screen. As tradition we directly miss with the next attack and see, oh no, not again. Okay, barely survive. Ninja's last Please don't have pursuit, thanks. We easily win with Pelipa, yeah, no problems whatsoever. The way is blocked off because of some stupid pirates again. Let's beat them up as usual. In the weather station we find Pirate Queen Shelly. And she starts with a clownish Carvana and we start with our top percentage Tropius. Carvana starts with focus energy and we use growth to set up our special attack. We see a screech and of course we miss with Razor Leaf. Crunch comes next and of course a crit. But this time we hit with Razor Leaf and beat Carvana. Next is Mightyena and we see Intimidate. This is too dangerous and we switch into Weimar and see a bite which does a bit of damage. Weimar uses Surf and does over half but unfortunately we see a Swagger. We won't risk it and switch into Numa, losing some HP. Mightyena uses Swagger and we hit ourselves in confusion. Just great. Maybe Spellow can handle it and we receive some damage again. One wing attack is enough and Mightyena is finally defeated. We receive a level up and the Pirate Crow leaves the building. They want to gift us a puny little Pokemon but we don't care we have a gym to fight. But before that we have to battle someone else first. Brandon. He ambushed us in our way and thinks he have the upper hand now, but we will see. He starts with our scrawny Shroomish and we start with Witty Weimar and it's raining. Weimar uses Surf and it does over half, but Shroomish uses Mega Drain which heals back a good chunk of HP. Another Surf puts it down to the red and some HP are gained back thanks to Mega Drain. The next Surf chaos and we are still above half HP, which is great. Numel is next, but let's be honest, we use one Surf and Numel is defeated. Last is Marsh Tom, but Water is neutral against it. Weimar uses Surf and Marsh Tom is below half, but Takedown nearly takes us out which was scary. Another Surf and Marsh Tom is defeated. We beat Brandon and he hands over HM Fly as a payment to let him go. After a while, Numel evolves into Camera. I like this Pokemon, let's see how useful it will be. Next is Gym Leader by Nona. She seems to like flying types a lot, so let's start with one as well. She starts with a scared Swallow and we start with our perky Pelipper. Swallow uses Aerial Ace for some damage, but that's not good enough and we hit with Shockwave for over half. It uses Endeavor to get us low on HP, but that's totally fine. We hit with Shockwave and Swallow is defeated. Very good start. Next is Pelipper for a mirror match. We regain some 
damage fee. By know that if you use a protect to store for a turn and another protect to store for another turn. Please stop. We can find hit with Shockwave and Pelipper is defeated. Didn't lose any additional HP. Next is Skarmory. Shockwave hits and does below half, but Skarmory used Aerial Ace and did 18 damage, which is less than what we have left. Another Shockwave and Skarmory is nearly defeated, but we see Aerial Ace again and get to a dangerously low HP. We think about switching, but that won't matter and we see a Hyper Potion, while Shockwave hits and does below half again. Now we switch into Camera and see a steel ring which does very few damage. Aerial Ace hits and does a bit of damage while we hit with Ember and Skarmory is nearly defeated. Now she retreats to Altaria and Ember does no damage. We switch into Weimar but Altaria uses Earthquake for a lot of damage. We see another Earthquake but Weimar barely survives and hits back with Ice Beam. It crits and Altaria is defeated. I don't know if it mattered, I assume it did not. Last is Gummy and we regain HP thanks to a berry. We can't risk the attack. If she uses the Hyper Potion it's fine and the extra damage might be nice. But if she doesn't, we lose Weimar and basically can't complete the run anymore. So we switch into Sweller and see a Hyper Potion. But why Sweller? Nobody knows. We use Wing Attack for no damage and get hit with Sand Attack. Sweller comes back and we use Combustion, but get hit with another Sand Attack. Another Sand Attack when we miss with Ember. Skami uses another Sand Attack already out of PP and we hit with Ember for a lot of them. This time Skami uses Aerial Ace which nearly KOs and we miss again. We have to switch out, no way Combust can survive another turn. We switch into Swallow and see an Aerial Ace for some damage. Wing Attack still does no damage and Skarmory uses Steel Wing, which did a lot, and busts his fans. That is bad. After that we switch into Camera, what we should have done ages ago, and easily tank a Steel Wing. We also regain some HP. Skarmory uses Aerial Ace for a bit of damage and we finally KO with Ember. Skarmory took way too long, but hey, that's my fault, I guess. We gain the badge and can move on. On the way, Swablu evolves into Altaria. I genuinely don't know if this Pokemon is useful or not, but let's keep it for now and see what happens. When we arrived at the graveyard, we find a Paraking harassing some older people. Even though they kidnapped and stole the whole run, this goes too far. They steal a red orb and leave. We are going for them as well as the badges now, and for that we receive the blue orb. They run off to Slateport City and we nearly caught up, but it seems they stole a submarine. Thinking about it, I thought there were just some cosplayers and wanted to have fun. But it seems they are full on criminals. We try to get some equipment before delivering justice to these pirate clones, we find Brandon again. He thinks he can beat us? Please stop. Just stop. You're no good, sorry. He starts with a salty Spellow and we start with our winning Walmar. Spellow uses double team and it basically is a protect against me. Another double team and another miss. I hate this move. We switch into Pelipa since it has a move which always hits. We see another double team but Shockwave always hits and does it here as well. Endeavor hits but we don't care and just win with another Shockwave. Double team abusing is not cool. Shroomish comes next. Pelipa comes back and we send us Propius while Shroomish uses a Mega Drain for 1 HP. We're thinking about it for a moment and decide on using Growth to set up for the next Pokemon after that and get hit for some damage. We use Fly and hope it's enough, but it hits and didn't KO. It has to be like 1 HP. And of course, Effects Boy activates and puts us to sleep. This is so unlucky. We stay asleep for some turns and when we finally wake up, we use Magical Leaf to finally KO Shroomish and be done with it. Numel comes next. Tropius uses another Magical Leaf and Numel goes below half. We see a completely useless focus energy. Next turn, Numel is defeated thanks to Magical Leaf and we see the final Pokemon Marsh Tom. But as you expect, he has no chance and is defeated after one hit. With that, Brandon is defeated and stops bothering us, going back home. We are ready to raid the pirate hideout and show them the little mistake they made. Inside the hideout, we find one of the pirate generals, Matt. He tries to stand in our way and wants the battle. He starts with a clueless Kavana and we start with our trusty Tropius. One magical leaf is easily enough beating that Kavana. Shapito is next. Shapito shows us his focus energy but we just use another magical leaf and Shapito is gone. Matt uses Mydiana and we see an Intimidate. Tropius uses another magical leaf and it does overhaul while Mydiana uses a pitiful scary face. After that it uses Swagger which is way more scary but Tropius didn't care at all and just uses another magical leaf beating Mydiana. With that the pirate general Matt is defeated and our Combustion levels up to 36 thanks to the XP share. And that means that it evolves into its ultimate form, at least in this generation, Blaziken the Blaze Pokemon. While Blaziken had evolved, the pirate boss fled the scene, that means we have to follow him. On the way to the next gym, why am I evolved into Wildlord, which is a huge boost to our team. In the next gym, we find two gym leader, Tate and Liza. They want a double battle, the only mandatory double battle in the entire game. They start with a sad soul rock and a lame Lunatone, but we start with our wondrous Wildlord and our patient pillow. As usual, we have two Two Pokemon were Surf and two opponents were weak to Surf, so we just spammed that attack until the battle is over.
over. There's really nothing to it and there's never a single moment where we had any problems. Thanks to our new badge we are able to use dive outside of battle. With that new newfound power we are able to track down the pirates again. And that we did. We found the submarine at the seafloor cavern. After exploring for a bit we find a legendary water pokemon Kyogre. But that doesn't matter right now, we are here for just one person, Archie, the pirate boss. We will battle, but only one can leave this place. He starts with a malicious Mightyena while we start with our playful Pelipper. Intimidate activates, but doesn't matter for now. Pelipper uses Surf and it does over half. Mightyena uses Scary Face, or at least try to. Archie uses his Super Potion because he has no money, and we put that dog right back into low HP. Next time we use another Surf and Mightyena is defeated. Next is Crobat and he uses Confused Wave, which is very annoying and I really hate that move. But we still hit with Shockwave, but don't deal enough damage. Crobat uses Air Cut he really wants to cheese us, but we are not impressed and we just hit with another shockwave. Archie uses another super potion, but we are moving forward and just hit with another shockwave. We see a wing attack, but Pilipa just snaps out of confusion and beats Crobit with another shockwave. With that, we face up Pedo neck. It uses taunt, but we never plan anything else besides damaging moves. For example, shockwave which does over half. One last slash from Sharpedo before it is also defeated by Pelipper. With that, Archie the pirate boss is defeated. He is a sore loser and tries to destroy the whole world in the process with the Macon and Kyogre. But we can't let that happen. Maxi also arrives and tries to say something, but we don't care what he has to say, move outside and are on our way to beat the legendary creature Kyogre. We are at Zootopolis City and find a cave of origin here. And deep inside this cave we find it, the legendary Pokemon Kyogre. Ogre, the Pokemon who has the power to destroy the world. We start the fight. It begins to rain. Just he and us. Nobody to witness the battle which decides the fate of the world and our first move will be to flee. With that, Kyogre somehow leaves and doesn't seem to care anymore. And with that, the world is saved. Okay, that's fine with me. Just in front of Zootopolis City, we find Relicon, an interesting Pokemon. At least it can learn dive and waterfall, that's why we catch it. We are finally at the last gym and its leader, Dwallace, the last badge we need in order to finally face the Elite Four. He starts with his leering love disc, and we start with our philanthropic Pelipper and open with Shockwave which does over half. Loftus uses Water Pulse for a bit of damage, another Shockwave and Loftus is done, but it was never a problem in the first place. Next is Whiskat. We use Surf, get a crit and nearly KO, pretty good stuff. But we see Amnesia, really bad for it. Wallace uses a Hyper Potion and we hit with Surf for only a pitiful amount. After thinking for a bit, we switch into Tropius, but Whiskash uses another Amnesia. Whiskash is faster and uses Water Pulse and it confused, but we anticipated it and had Tropius hold a Person Berry. Magically hits and does a good amount of damage. Another water pulse but no confusion. And Tropius magical leaf beats Whiskash. That's a very good for us. Next is Celio. Tropius doesn't like ice attacks very much, so we switch out into Blessing, tanking and a Aurora Beam. We think about it, but use Double Kick, which nearly KOs Celio. Celio uses Water Pulse, which crits and Blessing is nearly KO'd in one hit. That was close. We are scared for Blessing and switch into Pelipper. Celio smelt off fear and uses Aurora Beam, knowing we are switching into Pelipper. Just one Shockwave and Celio is finally defeated, and Wallace already shows his ace, Mylodic. We switch into Wildlord, which was the plan from the very beginning, and get a bit of damage from Ice Beam. Another Ice Beam for some damage and here comes Wildlord. Using Warlord number 1. Another Ice Beam here comes Warlord number 2. Wildlord tries again but we just shrug it off and use Warlord number 3. It is now scared because it knows what will come next. It uses another Ice Beam but Wildlord just keeps losing Warlord number 4. And Wildlord is defeated. Last up is Seeking but we already know how this will end. Wildlord uses Warlord number 5 and Seeking is defeated. The dead Warlord is defeated and we have all 8 gym battles. We can now finally move on to the Elite Four, but before that we need to go through Victory Road. I never use that hidden machine, but I really hate how dark it is in here, so we use Flash. I think it's the first time we use Flash in like forever. At the end of Victory Road we find a helpless boy from the beginning of the game again. Wally or something. He wants to show us how much he evolved from back then, so we battle one last time. He starts with an absent minded Altara and we start with our winsome Wilo. Altara uses Dragon Dance, which could be pretty bad, but we just use Ice Beam and Altaria is defeated. Wally sends out Magneton next. We switch into Camerop 
anticipating an electric attack, but we see a miss supersonic instead. Magneton uses tri attack, but it doesn't deal relevant damage, but Camerop uses earthquake, which easily KOs Magneton. And with that, two are down, and we see the Cuddy next. Sing misses, and earthquake deals a lot of damage, but didn't KO. Wally thinks the super potion might be good, but it's not good enough. And another earthquake easily beats the Cuddy. Next is his ace Pokemon, God War. It uses the forbidden move double team, and we miss with earthquake. Another double team, and another miss. I hate this. We see another one, but this time Earthquake hits and did a lot of damage. Wally uses a super potion and we miss again. This time Godwire uses Psychic for a lot of damage and a special defense drop, but we hit with Earthquake again for one last time. We need to switch out and Tropius seems to be a good candidate. Psychic hits but did below half. Another Psychic and Tropius is nearly KO but uses a magical leaf to finally defeat Gardevoir. Last up is Rosalia. We switch into our Blaze Pokemon Blaziken, tanking a magical leaf. Blaziken uses Blaze Kick but misses, while Rosalia uses Toxic which shouldn't matter anymore. This time Blaziken hits with Blaze Kick and Rosalia is defeated. With that the little boy Wally is defeated as well and can go home now, while we face the final challenge of the run, the lead 4. The level cap is 55 because of Drake's Salamence. The level distribution is quite weird in this generation, but that's okay I guess. The first member of the Elite Four is Sydney, the master of the dark arts. He starts with his metal sum, Mydiana, and we start with our blazing Blaziken. Intimidate activates. Blaziken uses Bulk Up to buff up for the battle, while Mydiana misses with a takedown. One buffed up Brick Break is enough and Mydiana is defeated. Next is the Grass type Shiftry. We use Brick Break since we have an attack boost and Shiftry is defeated as well. Upsell comes next. Another Brick Break and another victim to our power. Upsell is defeated and next is Shapido. Shapido uses Swagger which is very annoying but we came prepared with the berry and the confusion is healed even though it was meant for Mydiana. But oh well. One Brick Break is easily enough considering the Swagger buff. Last is Cacturn. We use Blaze Kick and defeat Cacturn as well. It's funny rewatching the battle and thinking, why would I ever use this move? I don't know, but we got lucky and won, that's what matters, right? The second member of the Elite Four is Phoebe, a ghost specialist. She starts with a dubious Dusclops and we start with our wise Wylo. One Surf puts Dusclop below half and a Shadow Punch hits for some damage. Another Surf and a One-Eyed Ghost is defeated. Next is Barnett. We use another Surf and Barnett is in yellow HP, where we see Spite, which can be very annoying. Wylord surfs once more and Barnett is defeated. Sableye comes next. Another Surf and Sableye is in red, but it uses Shadow Ball for a lot of damage and a special defense drop. We use Ice Beam for a change, hit, do more than half and freeze, super lucky. Another Ice Beam and Sableye is defeated, only two left. Next is Bennett 2. Wildot uses Surf and we KO thanks to a crit. Very nice. Last is Duskops 2. Surf does below half and we get hit with a Shadow Ball for a lot of damage. Since we still need Wildot for the upcoming battles, we switch into Pelipper and it tanks the Shadow Ball easily. Pelipper uses Surf and we nearly KO, but the Shadow Ball in return hits for some damage and we'll see a special drop. We use yet another Surf and Duskops refuses to lose just yet, but it uses an Ice Beam which puts us dangerously low. Phoebe uses her Full Restore and we hit with another Surf for a low amount of damage. Damage. We switch into Blaziken and tank a Shadow Ball which did a bit too much damage. Blaziken uses Blaze Kick which nearly KOs but also burns. But Duskloff plays unfair and uses Confuse Ray which is very annoying. The burn damage was not enough but very close. We think for a bit and choose to switch out into Camera, directly into Earthquake of course. But it did no damage, what? It's fine, burn damage finishes it off and we beat Phoebe easily. With that we have two Elite 4 members down and two remaining. The third member of the Elite 4 is Elsa, the Snow Queen. She starts with a gloomy Glalie and we start with our bombastic Blaziken. Glalie uses Light Screen which might be annoying but we use Brick Break and Break right through. Glalie is defeated and next is Celio. Another Brick Break and Celio is gone before using any moves. We see Celio 2 next. Since it worked on the last Celio, it should work on this Celio too. With that we see Warren next. Another Brick Break and Warren is nearly defeated but we see Surf and uh, we survive, barely. Blaziken uses Brick Break again and we can move on to the last Pokemon Glalie 2. Just another Brick Break and with that Elsa is defeated and we can move on to the last two battles of the run. The final member of the Elite 4 is Drake, the Scaly Boy. He starts with his Scaly Shellgun and we start with our Witty Weimar. We press on Ice Beam and expect a Protect, but okay, we just hit and Shellgun is down. Next is Altaria. It uses Dragon Dance, let's see if it works out. 
but we just hit with Ice Beam and it didn't work out for Drake. Flygon comes next and uses Sandstorm, but we just hit with Ice Beam and Flygon is easily KO'd. Sandstorm does a bit of damage we see Flygon 2 next. The dreaded sand attack is used, but Weinmeyer just hits again with Ice Beam and Flygon 2 is defeated as well. Drake's final Pokemon Zelements comes next, hitting with Intimidate and a little sand as well. Zelements uses Dragon Claw and oh boy does it deal a lot of damage, but we just hit with Ice Beam for an easy KO. That could have gone way worse. Anyway, Drake is defeated, the Elite Four is done, and we have only one trainer left, Steven. The jerk who taunted us right at the beginning of the game. We are finally able to face him in battle, proving once and for all who the real champion of Hoenn is. We haven't lost a single battle yet. I mean, it's a Nuzlocke, so of course not. And this will not change. Now we face the champion Steven, the master of heavy metal. He starts with a shabby Skarmory and we start with our charming camera. Skarmory uses Toxic, but we have a berry prepared for this situation and an overheat is enough for the Metal Bird, lowering our special attack a lot. Agron comes next. Agron uses Earthquake, but we survive and we show him how it's done. One Earthquake and Agron is defeated. Blazik gains a level up thanks to the EXP share and we see Metagross next. We think about the move to use, but it doesn't matter. Metagross just uses Earthquake and Camerop is defeated. Thanks for everything, we will win this for you. We choose Wildot next. Another Earthquake puts us in a danger zone and Surf does about a quarter, which is bad. Not thinking about switching, we lose Vylor to another Earthquake. Very sad indeed, but in order to win, we have to make sacrifices. Altaria is next, we use an Earthquake as well and does about a quarter, while Metagross misses with Meteor Mash and recovers HP thanks to her berry. Now I realize that I have Dragon Dance and use it, but Meteor Mash hits and we are very deep in the danger zone. We use another Earthquake and Metagross barely survives and Meteor Mash misses again. Very good. Of course, Steven cheats and uses a Full Restore while we hit with Earthquake for a lot of damage. Steven switches into Claydol, levitating over the ground move. Thinking about the next move, we switch into Tropius and see Claydol using a light screen. It also uses Reflect and Tropius and Magical Leaf does nearly no damage. Claydol hits with Engine Power and we try to stall some turns with Fly, but we hit Critical, putting Claydol low on HP. Another Engine Power as a crit this time, while we use Magical Leaf for some damage but not enough. Light screen wears off. Steven cheats again and uses her Full Restore, while Magical Leaf does some damage but not enough. Another Engine Power on Tropius is defeated. We didn't use it that much, but it was nice having it. We switch into Pelipper to finally beat Claydol. One Surf and Claydol is done, it's now even. Amaldo comes next and we use Surf to deal a lot of damage, but we see an Engine Power which did way too much damage and it gains the boost, that means the battle is essentially over now. Steven is Steven and he has to cheat again, while Surf does about half thanks to the boost. Amaldo is now faster and beats Pelipper with another Engine Power, but no boost this time. Pelipper is a great Pokemon and it helped a lot. We choose Blaziken as our last hope. Blaziken's Brick Break hits and nearly KOs a Mildo while we see every is for what? Okay, at least we survived. No full restart this time and Amaldo is finally defeated. Steven chooses Metagross next. Blaziken uses his special move Blaze Kick and Metagross is defeated in one kick. Last is Credily. Can we do it? We shake every odds we have. Do we use Blaze Kick with Blaze Up or do we use Brick Break because it's very effective? This move will decide if we win or lose. Blaziken uses Brick Break and it survives. Credily uses Engine Power and Blaziken is down. Our starter, which we had since it was a cute little torchic. But it comes down to this. Altaria vs Credily. We press an Earthquake again. And Steven, you little pizza. Okay, another full restore. Earthquake did a bit of damage, but it's over now. We use an aerial ace and see an ancient power which beat Altaria just like that. We lose to the jerk Steven. I see him grinning while we lose conscious. Please, Arceus, don't let it be our end. Give us another chance, please. Anyway, Drake is defeated, the Elite Four is done, and we have only one trainer left, Steven. The jerk who taunted us right at the beginning of the game. We are finally able to face him in battle, proving once and for all who the real champion of Hoenn is. We haven't lost a single battle yet. I mean, it's a Nuzlocke, so of course not. And this will not change. Now we face the champion Steven, the master of heavy metal. He starts with a shabby Skarmory and we start with our charming camera. Skarmory uses spikes, which may be very annoying for this battle, and an overheat is enough for the Metal Bird, lowering our special attack a lot. Agron comes next. Agron uses Earthquake, but we survive and we show him how it's done. One Earthquake and Agron is defeated. Blazik gains a level up thanks to the EXP share and we see Metagross next. 
Metagross uses Psychic and Camerot is defeated. Thanks to everything, we will win this for you. We choose Wildot next, getting some damage from Spikes. Metagross uses Earthquake, which did a lot of damage, and Self did about a quarter. We switch into Altaria, predicting the Earthquake, and Metagross did use it. Altaria uses Earthquake itself to hit Metagross into the yellow, while Metagross hits with Meteor Mesh for a lot of damage. Another Earthquake puts Metagross very low, and a Psychic defeats Altaria. We didn't use it a lot, but we will use this opening to win. Blaziken comes next. One Blaze Kick is enough, and Metagross is defeated. Steven chooses Armaldo next. Blaziken uses Bulk Up and tanks an Aerial Ace. Brick Break next, and Armaldo is in the yellow, but another Aerial Ace puts us into the red. We use another Brick Break, and Armaldo is defeated. With that, only two Pokemon remains. One of them is Claydol. Blaziken uses a Blaze Boosted Blaze Kick, but it does only a bit over half. While Claydol defeats Blaziken with an Earthquake. We started the journey with a cute little Torchek, and we came very far with it. We choose Pelipper next. Pelipper uses Surf and it KOs Claydol. That means only one Pokemon is left. Next is Cradley. Pelipper's Ice Beam hits, but doesn't even do half. An Engine Power hits us pretty hard. Another Ice Beam puts Cradley to nearly no HP, but its Engine Power does the same to us. Steven wants to cheat and uses a Full Restore, but we hit with Ice Beam again and puts him back to low HP. Use another Ice Beam and critical hit for the win. That felt so good. We win. May was indeed able to become champion even though it's not in one go. We lost to the very last Pokemon, but I thought it would be interesting to try the last battle again instead of restarting the run. That means of course I was not able to beat the Nuzlocke, which is fine for me. I thought this run would be very easy because May has a good variety of Pokemon to use and very good ones as well. To be fair, I lost many in the early game like Brilum or Lombra, but that happens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, please leave a like, and if you want to see more, please consider to subscribe. I have more of these runs, you can check some out if you click on the video on the screen right now. As always, have a nice day, and I hope to see you next time.